Is saline a good option for testing out the look of cheek implants? 28 years old, female. In September, I will be having my septum straightened and was interested in also getting cheek implants during that same surgery. I realized that fillers would be a good alternative. However, I don't want the hassle of bruising each time I get a filler placed in the future and would like a permanent solution. Would having saline put in my face be a good indication of what an implant would look like? If so, will I bruise at all from having that done? Thank you for your question. You submit a question without a photo, and you're asking your question whether the use of saline is a good way to predict how a cheek implant will look. And you've stated that you, are, you understand that fillers is an alternative but you want to avoid bruising and you're looking for something more permanent. Well, I can certainly help you with this type of question. We deal with this question uh, pretty much every day in our practice. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and I have throughout my career used different solutions to help augment the cheeks, both surgically and non-surgically, everything from cheek implants, fat grafting, and injectable fillers. So I will share with you a little bit of perspective and look and, and perhaps help you also take a longer view as to what permanence is. So to begin with, and we're just talking about the facial implant solution. Certainly cheek implants work and they, are, and they can be very, very effective in providing re really good volume in the face and have a nice outcome. In terms of trying to use a tool to pre for predictability, I think that saline has limited value. And I'll explain why, and this is from, again, first-hand experience. We would, we, we would often try just putting a little bit of saline to try to create what the volume can be, but the problem is the saline dissipates very quickly, and it creates more global filling. It ends up filling out the soft tissue as well as the area that we would place the cheek implant. So I would say that saline as a predictor is not 100% useless, but it doesn't, it's not really as predictive, uh, as useful for predictability as would be ideal. I think that it's very important to understand that when we talk about a permanent implant in the face, we're having to still accept that the face does change with time. And that change involves bone loss. It involves loss of fat and loss of soft tissue and skin quality and thickness. So you can, you can certainly want something that's, quote, long term, but understand that there can be, depending on facial, um, facial anatomy, a, a, a change that can be not so great with time when it comes to permanent facial implants. Now again, I, I still strongly believe in the benefits, but when I look at my patients these days, and again, having gone through an evolution of cheek implants, fat grafting, and fillers, and as a surgeon, I have all the tools in front of me to be able to do these things. I'm not limited. And what I have, as far as that um, concern about bruising and longevity, I think that you can at least maybe potentially investigate this concept called structural volumizing. And I'll explain further. When, before, before there were long-lasting fillers, we had a lot of limitations. But once longer-lasting fillers, such as Juvederm Ultra Plus and Juvederm Voluma came along, now we, had a, we have a hyaluronic acid filler that can last considerably longer and it can last in, in terms of more than one year up to two years. Now that still may not, that's still not permanent, but think about it this way. When we do structural volumizing, we're placing the filler 
at the bone level, literally going where the most contribution to loss of volume is related to facial aging. And what I find really wonderful about doing this is that I can place the filler at different areas in a way that I can really customize and sculpt the appearance in a way to create a nice natural look and create the augmentation that I want. In surgery, it's difficult to do that same thing. In surgery, we're injecting local anesthetic into the tissue space and we're releasing all of these connections and then placing the implants accordingly. Yes, we can try to massage out the fluid and look at the projection of the implants and the overall shape and try to maximize symmetry. It's not completely out of the question. But we are dealing with a certain amount of swelling that we just can't always compensate for. And you can shape implants, so you can certainly do that. But now that we have these fillers, I find myself routinely using these fillers considerably more often than I would ever do cheek implants. And a lot of people actually have objections to the concept of facial implants, and so certainly they're not going to even consider that anyway. But if you're open to the idea, you may want to think about using structural volumizing. I, you mentioned that you're concerned about bruising. When we, do these when we do these procedures, the technique basically is 99.9% .9 without bruising. And it really works out very, very well. Um, this is, a, this is a, a, a unique approach, and most physicians do not perform this procedure regardless of specialty. It's just a certain learned technique that has worked out very, very effectively in our practice. So when I, when I think about the solutions for a particular, let's say, in the age range of mid-30s to all the way into the 60s, you actually have a lot of volumetric loss and opportunity to create volume and do it in a way that is customizable, that is predictable, it's very safe, and extremely convenient. So what I can do in, a, in literally minutes with filler that would take me more than an hour or, well, actually minutes per side, but in surgery under anesthesia, so you think about just the global time and the healing process, there really is no comparison. Now, chick, uh, facial implants do, does have a role, but in my practice, it's basically become a role that's relevant during pa for patients who I'm going to do facelifting for. If someone needs facial volume and is not interested in fillers, well, I could offer them the placement of cheek implants at the time of facelifting to help them with that area of concern. But again, by and large, we've done a lot more um, we've, made, we've been able to help a lot more people with structural volumizing because of all of the benefits that I described earlier. So I think you get the best of all worlds by that technique. You get the long-term benefit, not permanent, but long-term. At the same time, you avoid the bruisability, you avoid surgery, and you're able to get a very nice outcome that you can have performed that at, at certain times with some degree of convenience. A lot of times people who have these types of procedures like cheek implants are still going to do Botox injections, are still going to do other fillers, are still going to do other laser procedures. So it's not like they're not visiting the doctor's office for other enhancement type procedures. So it, it makes sense for someone like like that to consider structural volumizing as an alternative to cheek implants. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.